I don't think we're as bearish as it seems like we are. And I'm going to show you why tonight. There is one sector that was really bearish today. In fact, the only one that shows a cluster. Today's trade idea comes out of that sector. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, May the 2nd, 2018. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Welcome to those of you who are watching us for the first, first time. Glad you found us. Keep coming back for more. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click, hover over the logo in the bottom right corner of the screen. Click on that red subscribe button that you see there. Uh, also, hit the thumbs up icon down below the video. That lets me know, number one, that you like the video. It also tells me, number two, with one click, that you want me to do it again, right? That you want us to keep doing these videos day after day. It's a really easy way to give us feedback. Comment on anything that stands out to you from today's video. You have to scroll down further to see the comment section down below. Uh, join our daily market outlook email list. There's a link to do that in the video description. Follow me on Twitter for more content like this throughout the day, throughout the week. My handle's up on the top uh, of the screen here, top left of your screen. Uh, there's also a link down below that will take you there. Like and retweet tonight's market outlook tweet. Always pinned at the top of my timeline. Join the Market Outlook community on Facebook. Again, the address is at the top left corner of your screen. There's also a link down in the video description that will take you there as well. All right, let's take a look at the market forecast indicator on the S&P 500. You can see uh, we dropped back down today. We're still trading within the range of those long lower shadows. So still nothing uh, necessarily to be too concerned with. They had a little bit of an update yesterday coming off the lows. Uh, we didn't come off the lows today and we traded within yesterday's range. Getting below tomorrow, you know, if we, you know, after hours are down a little bit, if we were to get below that and, and get below those lows, you know, we still have that support to deal with around 2600. So, really, even you'd, you'd have to get down below. I mean, you got that low point down here at 2532 before you get significantly bearish. You have to close down below that um, before we, you know, we start saying, okay, you know, we're going to be in a bearish market here for a while. Um, that's the kind of move we're looking at. Otherwise, we've got, you know, this downward sloping trend line um, that is. Uh, keeping us down. So we'll just bring this downward slope and trend line across all those candles again. Um, that is holding us down on one end and you've got this uh, horizontal line uh, of resistance here holding us up on the other end. So zoom back out. You can kind of see you know, how that's working. So so yeah, I mean, we we are still kind of coiling within that. Now we typically don't come out of that coil on, you know, if, you know, we don't, it won't, this, these lines won't cross each other before we break out of this one way or the other. That's usually what happens. And uh, the question, of course, is, is which way we're going to break out. You can see, even with the weakness we've had the past really three days, the intermediate line is still rising. And the near term line actually turned up a little bit today. Uh, momentum line fell briefly, um, but the near term line turned up a little bit without getting in the reversal zone. You notice we haven't gotten to the reversal zone on the past few near term lows. Um, you know, one, we did here obviously on this one, um, but not on this the one after, which was a little bit higher. Not on this one either. And so far, this is a near term low point that we're not getting on uh, high, a lower low point yet either. Now the highs aren't really getting too bullish. Uh, either you know this one was a much lower high than the last near-term high uh, where my cursor is and the next one was a higher high and then we got that lower high and, and all of them are getting actually actually getting progressively lower in the reversal zone to the upside so you can kind of see how neutral we are with the intermediate line rising but remember it's rising it's right at the midpoint so it's it's really more neutral we've been you know really since coming off this low point here uh, we've been more neutral than anything. The intermediate line reflects that. The near-term line reflects that with the highs getting you know, less and less into the reversal zone and the lows not getting in the reversal zone down here at all. This comes after we had a period of volatility where we had, first of all, we had a trend with all the near-term highs in the reversal zone and the lows not. That's typical near-term line pattern for a trend. You can see after that, we had a, an increase in volatility where all the near-term highs were in the reversal zone and all the near-term lows are in reversal zones. So, you know, big big ups and downs there. So now we're just getting the opposite as we coil uh, into this, um, you know, small period. Now we're going to break out of this. One way or the other, we're going to break out of this. And like I said, uh, it will take more to break the lows than it will to break the highs. From a, from a um, 
from a catalyst perspective. We're going to need a bigger catalyst to break through support because there's a lot of volume here. You're going to need a bigger catalyst to break through that support than you're going to need to break through the highs because you remember, you know, the move that we had coming into this uh, consolidation was a bullish move. Uh, we had a great discussion uh, in our class this morning, in our inventory class this morning, about consolidations. They take on all different names, right? Depending upon how you draw the lines, will give you the name of the consolidation. But the reality is that's a consolidation after a trending move, uh, which typically will act as continuation patterns uh, when, they're, when, when we just consolidate like that. Um, and so that's why you, you would expect a breakout to the upside after a consolidation like this. Uh, whether that happens or not, you know, anything can happen, of course. Um, but you've got a lot of support uh, down in this area, if you recall um, from the, if you recall from, let's see, where was that chart? This one? Uh, from all the volume that's going to be uh, in this area here. Let me pull up SPY. All the volume here and this node uh, just below 260 uh, that will be holding us up. So um, you've got a lot of volume in this area too, which is going to keep us attracted into that area. Uh, so now go back to our market forecast chart. Um, we're going to be a, we're going to be attracted to that area um, because of all that volume that's there as well from the volume profile. So. You know, again, market sentiment. You know, market forecast is pointed higher. Don't read a whole lot into that until we get out, until we get above that high, really, right? And and that's why I say too, don't read a whole lot into a bearish posture until we get below that low point. So we've, you can kind of see the range that's been set around the chart's midpoint, and until we break out of that range, we're not going to really get a good trend one way or the other. All right, so now let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, and you can see uh, the Dow Jones here um, is obviously looking very similar. Coiling market sentiment is, is about as flat as it can be, right about at the midpoint. Near-term line still showing the same pattern as the S&P. Momentum line falling into, the, the, into uh, the lower reversal zone, but again, not to an extreme. Not like that day uh, that we bounced off of. And you can see all the long lower shadows over the past week uh, that will that will hold for support you know until we close below that and of course you still have all these long lower shadows this one from uh, February the 9th at 23360 and then this one at 23344 um, so those you know mainly that one there we had to close below that we never did close below it even if we did trade a little below it there um, before we really get significantly bearish and same thing we won't get bullish until we get above this 60 level I know I generally say 50 for the one to three month period but because we've been so sideways here and consolidating during this pattern and you can see where the peaks are during this consolidation have been so you really need to get above 60 on the Dow Jones before we get an established trend looking at the um, Nasdaq composite you can see it's been a little bit more bullish, not as bearish today. Um, you know, it's coming down just a little bit. You can see the intermediate line rising to getting up into the upper reversal zone. Again, has to get above this peak before you're going to be really bullish uh, to the upside. You can see uh, a little bit more of a bullish near-term low. Like right now, you know, the near-term line did get above 50 here. It's above. It's at 53 and a half over here on the left. So it did get above 50. Um, uh, so, you know, we did establish a, a higher low point and higher near-term low uh, after getting a lower near-term high. So you can see, you know, if I were to draw the triangles uh, on this, um, you can kind of see how they're developing coming across all these highs. So, so we're coiling there, looking for a breakout one way or the other. Uh, and then finally, the near-term line here is the most bullish on the Russell 2000 because we actually did go up today. Didn't close at the highs. That would have been a lot more bullish because we had to close above all those highs there. Um, but coming off of, you know, we did close above the high of the low day. Uh, we closed above yesterday's uh, candle. And you can see the near-term line. You can also see the intermediate line never did come below 50 here during this kind of bout of weakness. So we're still above 50 after crossing above 50 right there. You can kind of see that orange line. Uh, crossing above 50. We've been above 50 this whole time. Uh, coming off of, 
you know, a, a rel- relatively bearish. I mean, it was a lower low uh, diverging with the higher lows on the near term line. Uh, so, like I said, you'd have to cross get up above these highs, which we on an intraday basis we were. That would have been really bullish for the markets if we were to close at the highs today, uh, but still relatively bullish considering that we closed above yesterday's high at the very least on the Russell 2000. Remember again, if you want these can these these scripts here, they are available to market scholars. Uh, so make sure uh, you um, you use that link to subscribe. That's on this this Market Outlook blog post down at the bottom uh, to subscribe to be able to get uh, access to our classes, our beta you know beta classes here because we are in beta mode right now, uh, building the website, uh, looking towards a summer launch, and of course uh, these scripts will be. Uh, one of the things you can get as well. A reminder for those that are watching the Market Outlook uh, through our Market Scholars blog, I remember there's the link to discuss tonight's video in the Outlook. Make sure, uh, be sure to create any new topics on any comments or questions you have that you want to create a uh, conversation about from tonight's video. You can do that right there in the forum. And remember, every time you do that or you reply to somebody else's topic, you get enroll, you get put into uh, the uh, proverbial hat so that your name can get drawn out uh, for a chance at a gift card, right? We talked about that last night. Um, uh, there's three random drawings, and the more you the more you create topics, the more you reply, all that, the more likely you are to win one of those. Uh, so that's how you do that. And of course, uh, you can see there's a link up in the top right corner uh, right now. You can see a link that will take you there too that you can click on. And then finally, um, uh, three things, three clicks will tell me you want me to keep doing these videos. Uh, for those that have Twitter accounts, click on that heart button there that will like it. You can also uh, share it uh, with others by retweeting it by clicking on that one. Uh, for those that have Facebook pages, I, I find it a little hard to believe that uh, there's more people with Twitter accounts than Facebook accounts. Usually it's the other way around. But if you have a Facebook account, you can hit that thumbs up there too. And the third one is to click on that like button. Uh, for those remember if you're not subscribed to our daily market outlook email list you can do it right there first name last name email address and click on that sign up button all right when you look at the long term uh, moving averages again you know we never did get that arrow the green arrow showing that we're above uh, the 50 day moving average so we're still trading in between the 50 and 200 day moving averages when you're in between the 50 and 200 day moving average there's going to be volatility and that's what we're seeing right now uh, as we kind of gap and you saw that you know if I were to zoom out a little bit further uh, on this time frame and go out to a longer term you can see we traded a lot in between here uh, between the 15 and 200 day moving averages you can't really see that very well because it's kind of condensed um, but you can kind of get the set you, you can get the idea uh, that we're we are trading there um, pretty you know, it, you know, things got relatively volatile as as the MACD started to come down. We had a lot of ups and downs here. Uh, we really didn't take off one way or the other, even though this the general trend for the 50 day moving average after a little bit of a pullback in early 215 uh, was upward for the rest of that year. And you can see in early 215 uh, where we had you know, again, you can't unfortunately you can't see um, here. Let me see if I can't remove the studies. For a second, you can see there in early 215, right there. See all the ups and downs that we had while we were in between, and that 50-day moving average was falling. So that's, you know, that was a smaller amount of time, and then we had that the rest of the year in 2015. So this is a little, but we also didn't have as big of a gain because we had that pulled back in and uh, 14. Uh, we had a, we didn't have as big of a gain as we had this year. So bigger gain. So bigger volatility, similar to what you saw there, trading again in between a 50 and 200 day moving average, um, trading in between the 50 and 200 day moving average um, uh, with a falling 50 day moving average, but a rising 200. All right, so uh, so again, I expect you expect a lot of arrows here. You generally start to get a lot of arrows um, as these two lines converge towards each other. We're converging really quickly towards each other, but also remember a lot of that fluff here uh, from that kind of last ditch move to the upside. Uh, without that, you know, the the reality is, if I were to draw a trend line here, um, you know, this this trend. 
of the gap between the 50 and 200 day moving average would have looked like this, right? So we'd have been, I mean, you can see how we peaked up here. here let me get a little bit closer to something like that. We peaked up there and then that was the trend line that we kind of stayed on uh, before things really started to pull away. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at right now. We pulled away to the upside there. And that's why we pull, you know, we pulled back so much here. Uh, the reality is we're kind of on pace uh, for a little bit of a, you know, drop below. You can see there's little dips below here. Uh, so we're on pace for the kind of dip and then a bounce back up to the trend line before, you know, we get something like this. When they get really close to each other, we've been, we've gotten a lot of arrows back to back to back to back to back. Like I said, I think we're kind of more in this mode here, um, this two th early 2015 where we're trading in between the 15 200 day moving averages uh, with some volatility and arrows that's kind of where we're at uh, right now so could we get something like this bounce back up to the line uh, where we even get up to slightly higher highs uh, the rest of the year um, you know that's kind of what the expectate my expectation is whether we'll get up to those highs see I think that high was just so big for those four weeks we're just like whoa crazy move so I think it'll be a lot harder to get up above those highs than it would have been if we were to get up above this high, if that were the actual high, if we were to consolidate it from that point going forward, um, then it would have been much easier to get up to higher highs. Um, but we got all that fluff here in the beginning of the year, and it created all that volatility right there. Nothing trend changing. It's just, you know, again, with if, if, if this were the consolidation move from that point to here, nobody would be, you know, we wouldn't care. Right, we would been we have been grinding towards you know the zero just like we always expect, but that threw people for a loop here. This this move threw people for a loop, and it threw this up higher. And really, this from that point on is where we really went up higher. Right, from you know really we should have been consolidating more in about this area here, um, but we had that big move in December and then in January from that point. So. You know, even from if we were consolidating from there, you know, we'd be higher right now than that, than that level. So we're just trying to, to figure out, reconcile all that bullishness uh, that was probably more bullishness than uh, what, what was justified at the time. And I remember tax reform and a lot of that, that was what drove a lot of that when tax, when it finally got passed and the beginning of the year came about. When you look at the three green arrows uh, chart, you can see we got three red arrows again. So we got the red arrow on the moving average. We got the rare, red arrow still in the MACD, and we're, we got the red arrow on the phantom red arrow on the stochastic, so pointed lower again. So three red arrows with a falling moving average. Uh, so pr you know bearish from that perspective. Again, you know not significantly bearish until you break through those lows. So we're not in bear market mode yet. Uh, until we break those lows, but we're also not able to really get going to the bullish side either. Not until you know we're able to get above that high. That's our last uh, here. If I were to zoom out again, um, you know our last significant high point on the MACD and stochastics. The one before that one would have been right over here. So we're getting lower highs, and that that this um, stochastics never did get below 50. So that's that's really one big high point here. Um, you know, so that, you know, we had that high on the MACD and stochastics and then this high kind of a double dip to the upside, double peak, um, you know, like we have Mount Nebo here right above me. that has got three peaks. So this one had two peaks, um, but really one, right? And then uh, here's the late. So we're getting a, a, a succession of lower peaks according to the MACD and stochastics, but the lows aren't getting lower. You can see we're getting... Uh, the, you know that was a low point. This one was a low point, and right now we're forming a low point, and we're still not to a lower low point yet uh, either. And we have, but we haven't formed a higher high. Once you get above that high, then we'll be more bullish. Until then, we're kind of stuck in this range where there's strong support on one end and relatively strong resistance on the other. Not not as strong resistance, um, but strong enough to keep us coiling right now, without a catalyst to break us through. This is what it looks like when you break out those lines. So the MACD is below its moving average. Um, the stochastics here, here, let me pull up SPX and get rid of that volume. MACD is below its moving average. You can see it better right there. 
uh, and falling below zero. Stochastics is below its moving average and falling below 50. And then you can see the, the moving averages up here. Um, the eight is the green line. It is below the 17. That's why you have a negative MACD. Um, but it's not, both those lines are not below the 30 yet. They're all three falling, but, and you got price below all three. Um, so, it, you know, you've got more of a bearish picture here, um, but you don't have the 8 and the 17. You don't, you don't have a divergence yet uh, to the downside to where they're moving away from each other like this or like that. Again, I don't think you'll get that until you break below that support level. When you take a look at the intraday uh, volume today, uh, very, you know, very uh, spike in volume here at the end. That's where all the selling came, the bearishness. And, you know, yesterday we got above the four-week midpoint. After gapping down below it, we traded back up above it and closed above it, filled in the gap. Uh, right, We stayed above the four-week midpoint, uh, but below yesterday's high all day today, false breakout which tends to be more bearish anytime you get a false breakout move like that they're more bearish um you know when you get a breakout move but it doesn't hold so we got a breakout move above yesterday's high it didn't hold and you can see we fell all the way down we didn't get below yesterday's low but we fell all the way below the four week midpoint and they kind of give you some context on that four week midpoint here um and we'll take a look at it on the 30-day chart 30 minute chart um, you know there there's there, there's the rain there's the bearishness that we could have right that we have to get below. that's why I'm not too bearish now now we are trading uh, like I said in the after hours we're trading down a little bit 262.71 uh, so you know that that puts us right about where my cursor is right at the low point uh, for today so as bearish as the after hours is uh, we're still not below today's low much less yesterday's low much less less last week's low point uh, much less sniffing the four week low point which is where we're really getting bearish um, that's the 256.50 that's that april fourth low point you know if i were to zoom out a little bit more here to kind of give you some context that four week low points just above the uh, lows the significant lows that we'll be trading now that's going to move up and uh, tomorrow up to that low point so the four week midpoint is also going to move up tomorrow too. So depending upon where we trade, we could actually be more bearish from that perspective, but still not significantly bearish until we're, you know, really below these lows and down trading closer towards, you know, the, the four week low point there. If you take a look at the uh, trading range today, uh, we just had two, you know, 2.92 points. Uh, so not very big range, uh, smaller than the average. Um, you can see that on, on other charts. If I were to take a look at um, you know, what this chart right. Is it this one? There we go. So you can see we're trading at a smaller range today than the average true range there. Uh, go back to our uh, volume, volume chart. All right, bring up my study set again, uh, my drawings. So, so that, so the, and if I go back to the daily chart, the range is smaller. The volume was below average. The average is 103 million shares. Uh, we're trading below that. There's one and a half times. So we're not anywhere close. To, I mean, this as bearish again as today was. It's below average range and below average volume. They kind of give you a sense too of where we are in the volume. You know that the the average volume is this kind of grayish line. You can see we're coming off of a peak here in volume and we're falling uh, so again that when we're when volume falls that tends to be more bullish than bearish so we're still not you have for that line to get back going again to the upside uh, we've got to rise we got to get above average volumes for that to happen and and as i mentioned too um, the atr is also falling especially when you look at the atr here um, get rid of some of these charts here and you can see we're not getting you know we're not even getting a one percent move much less a two percent move and that's when things are really volatile um, but when you take you know that off uh, you look at this just the um, here look at just that ATR falling and giving myself a little bit more uh, perspective on the ATR and this is the ATR not on an absolute basis but on a relative basis compared to the price I mentioned how important that is because the price changes over long term. 
So again, you can see the ATR falling, and when it falls, it tends to coincide with bullishness. Now, you know, as it falls, there's gonna be ups and downs, and again, going back over here, there was some, you know, we had some ups and downs here in volume when we were trading between the moving averages with all that volatility. Um, so we're, that's kind of where we're getting here. We have some ups and downs, you know, but eventually as it falls, you know, that coincides with bullishness in the market. So, you know, we have to start getting some bigger trading ranges uh, above average, you know, above average trading ranges at 2.292 with a low implied volatility, implied volatility percentile. It, that doesn't necessarily suggest, um, you know, that we're really crazily or, or anticipating a crazy bearish market right now. Finally, you can see volatility kind of, you know, held. It was trying to get below 15 here. Couldn't quite get below 15 before bouncing back up. Uh, and a little bit of a bounce up higher. But again, you know, nothing too concerning um, here when you've got... Um, here, let's get this to an hour mark and then just kind of zoom in here. Let's see if we can zoom in. Um, uh, we're not going to really be able to see as well. Um, but you can see, you know, we're at a low point. Uh, we're not really, any, for us to be significantly bearish, we'd have to get above that 20 level. We'd have to get above outside of this neutral range between 90 and 95% and get on the VIX to VXV uh, to get up to this. Th this is the bearish zone, and that's your bearish sweet spot here. Uh, that's when we're bearish, and of course, we're still not anywhere close to that yet. So it seems like we're a lot more bearish than we are, but the reality is the charts aren't really confirming that bearish, that, that uh, the feeling of bearishness that's, that's out there. As we talk about what's driving the price action, you can see the big news today was the FOMC meeting that came out um, in the afternoon. Obviously, no rate hike, a little bit of a bump up in inflation um, a bias uh, that they had. The ADP report came out, you know, the first time uh, that we've had so many months, what was it, six months in a row that we've been above uh, 200,000. It's been the first time in, in a long, long time uh, that we've hit such strong levels there. GDP estimates are also very strong. Um, you can see as a whole, economic indicators are also still very strong strong relative to where we've seen in the past. Uh, and of course, we're, we're going to get a rate hike in June. Most likely, 95% chance we're going to get a rate hike in June. We're getting pretty decent odds uh, of another one in September, uh, about, what, a 75% odds uh, that we'll get another one in September because we got 25% that we won't, that we'll just get the one. Um, and then, of course, December is the one that matters, right? December is the one that people are looking for to see, are we going to get um, the third rate hike or the fourth for the year, a uh, third one by the end of the year. And you can see you're still, you're above 50% chance for that. And that's down a little bit uh, from yesterday. Um, but uh, you can see we're at least... The odds of getting, you know, all, the odds that came down for the third one went into this one. So we're still going to get three, definitely going to get three. The odds are getting very, very high for three. Uh, they're still relatively high, um, better than 50-50, slightly better than 50-50 that we'll get another one in, um, in December. And you can see, you know, GDP is strong. You know, that will support those long-term treasury yields. And we really don't have to worry about too much about rate hikes until the overnight rate gets as high as these longer-term rates. The longer-term rates are, are more influenced by economic expansion um, or economic expectations than the shorter-term are. So the more that they go up and stay up, and remember that the 10 years at a 3% yield right now, the overnight's at one and a half. So as long as, you know, the the this... The longer term yields move up higher. Uh, the three, the ten year yield moves up higher. So you can see, as long as we keep, as long as this gets up and stays at a premium above the overnight rate, then we're fine, right? I mean, that's it's not a bad thing for yields to go up. Yes, borrowing costs will go up, but you know, if the economic growth um, supports that then you're fine uh, from that perspective. And especially what we really need to see, more so than the 10-year note rising to those levels, is to see the 30-year uh, get up above this three, three and a quarter percent. 
area. That's going to be more tied than anything to economic growth expectations. So the more that can go up, uh, the better. The different sectors or different asset classes have, you know, you can see the dollar has been the king over the last two weeks. It's, it's It made a push again up higher. We've had a couple of days in a row of, of higher moves. In fact, it was the biggest mover over here today to the upside. Crude oil uh, also helped, but you see other commodities. DBA has been pulling back. Uh, crude, you know, crude oil up a little bit, but you can see it had pull, it has pulled back heading into today's low point. Uh, you can see IWM also uh, with a good day today. So again, it's kind of hard to be too bearish when small caps is one of your leader leading sectors. Excuse me, asset classes. On the lower end of things, emerging markets getting hit. You know, with that stronger dollar, commodity prices getting hit with a stronger dollar. There's foreign bonds, BWX. Uh, gold is pretty flat. Uh, on the day and you can see it's been weak you know it's been really weak with the strength in the dollar gold's in red down here at the bottom uh, emerging markets have had a bad couple of weeks too uh, with the dollar being as strong and there's your s p 500 kind of uh, lagging behind all uh, equity asset classes you know iwms and brown right there about you know percentage less of a loss efa is your developed markets doing better and of course the em is the one that struggled the most and you can see high yield, high yield uh, is this pink tag. It's not down as much as some of these other equity asset classes over that time. And you can see also too, uh, well, I didn't get that in there. Uh, high yield is, as, is also flat on the day. So again, not too bearish when you're not getting a whole lot of losses uh, in those areas uh, and especially in uh, the small cap area. I find it interesting to see uh, with economic growth estimates, uh, GDP estimates for the next quarter up above 4%. Now, granted, they were up about 5% for the first quarter. We finished at 23 for the advanced numbers. Um, but, you know, you got these economic growth sensitive areas over the past couple of weeks that are doing really poorly. Industrials, materials, all doing really poorly. Your interest rate sensitive areas up here, utilities, real estate, you can see. Uh, energy, of course, with the rise in, in crude oil is doing well. Um, that's why you know it's held up. Even though crude oil has been pulling back, you can see energy stocks have held up. Uh, so I think uh, you'll see a bounce back in crude oil prices uh, being held back a little bit by the strength in the dollar. Uh, you can see you got you know industrials or excuse me uh, financials and um, consumer discretionary outpacing uh, the XLK slightly outpacing the broad market down. 2.3 percent kind of it was un, you know underperforming for so long but those are your big underperformers for the past couple of weeks if you just look at today energy had was the only one that was up today the only sector that had a rally but look at that i mean again on a on a risk off day you don't expect consumer staples to be down two percent as a sector that's a pretty sharp decline. Uh, the this the we did a trade in one of these videos before on uh, TAP TAP. It was down like 15% today after earnings. So the whole sector is just getting hammered. If you're on my daily email, the daily market outlook email list, you'll see there's a lot of clusters, bullish clusters on stocks like uh, Pepsi, on Kellogg, on um, uh, Clorox, on uh, Clorox, on um, uh, Procter and Gamble on Philip Moore, Colgate Palmolive. That's that's the CL. Uh, Colgate Palmolive. So um, Kraft uh, down uh, as well. Kraft Heinz. So I mean, there's a lot of and Hershey's, uh, General Mills, all showing bullish clusters right now. And here I'm going to uh, take you to that 12, the the sector chart, uh, where you can see all of the sectors that put together. You can see the sector as a whole is the only one that got a cluster today. None of the rest of them got a cluster. It's got that green dot. It's on this really bearish move. It's it's about as bearish. I mean, industrials are looking poor. Remember, industrials and materials were the two others. Uh, financials is down below a uh, downward trending moving average. Um, but they're not, you know, you can see some sectors are pointed lower and are below downward sloping moving averages with bearish postures. That's why they're red here. But there are some that are green postures and, and some that are above and specifically energy and utilities that are above rising uh, moving averages. You can see you've got a couple of other bullish postures 
Um, this one, uh, XLY, at a 75 intermediate line. So it's relatively high uh, in a strong bullish posture. Those are the three strongest that we got. Even if it's moving average, kind of looks more like the S&P 500. At the very least, it's above its moving average where the S&P 500 is below. Uh, you can see real estate's looking a little bit better too. Not as well as utilities, but looking better. So you can kind of see where the areas is and where, definitely see where the weakness is. One of those stocks has been so aggressively uh, bearish today, and you can see uh, is that is a Colgate Palm Olive. Um, you can see it's DMI, you know the the negative DMI in orange here above 40, uh, the positive DMI down below 10, you know, and with one and a half times the average volume today, a lot of it on the sell side, obviously, uh, very very bearish pattern. I mean, you look at the Bollinger bandwidth. Uh, is about as high here let's get to Bollinger Bandwidth look how high it is and, and let me give you some perspective on that here keep it on the daily chart I mean we don't the Colgate doesn't make I mean look at all the other times it's you know made that big of a move to the upside and then we just sideways this big of a move to the downside then sideways uh, this big of a move to the downside I mean a little bit of an upward move uh, off of all of these uh, ups and downs right but but not really in this case not really significantly to the downside and of course big big move to the to the downside and if you were to take a look at the uh, market forecast chart for uh, the stock you know again it got a cluster yesterday and and again another cluster today so and if I look at the weekly chart on this it's getting a cluster uh, so far this week uh, on the weekly chart uh, so very very bearish um, you know this this poor stock has been just struggling here uh, you can see not a cluster on the monthly chart but look at the, how extremely low now we're only two days in so really you have to look at this one um, but you can see how extremely low uh, the um, momentum line is for um, this stock on a monthly basis it usually doesn't get that low uh, without some kind of bounce back I mean, you know, halting here on a monthly level. So very extreme bearishness on the stock. Uh, I think there's opportunity to take advantage of a speculative trade to say, you know what, as bearish as this stock is right now, um, you know, can we make a bounce back up, uh, up above here? And you can see even the near-term line is setting up for a divergence, a bullish divergence on there. If you take a look at some of these other indicators, like the uh, MACD and the stochastic, so let's come back uh, to this level here uh, and pull up CL on this chart. Uh, you can see just how you know extremely bearish these uh, these charts are too. Here, let me zoom out a little bit further. Uh, they give you some perspective on how low that MACD is compared to where this has been in the past. Uh, so. Uh, and stochastics also down there. You can see it's moving average. In fact, it's kind of right around where it's moving average is. So I think there's opportunity with this earnings behind us to say, okay, well, I think that's gone a little too far. Uh, can we get back up here? And we're well below, you know, the 30-day moving average, well below the 8-day moving average for that matter. It's kind of hard to stay really far away and push further away from an 8-day moving average. Is there opportunities for us to sell? You can see there's some pretty strong support at 62.5 on the multi-year basis. Here, let's go to, well, I, I am on the five-year chart. Let's zoom out. Uh, and let's, let me just draw a line here. Oops. Uh, right here. Let's draw a line and then edit that property and put it at 62.5. There we go. So there, as you can see, all those other significant lows that we had are right here at 62 and a half. There's been multiple touches, uh, and before that, let me go a little bit further. Uh, before that, you can see an old high point uh, in that area. So multiple touches, including this uh, drop that we had here on that big old bullish divergence there, uh, all getting to this level. So can we sell an option at this level? If I sold 62 and a half right now, the 62 and a half put, you know, I would get a dollar eight. I, I'll give back some of that to protect against a break below 62 and a half. That's why you buy that put. Uh, I can, I can um, buy, you know, I can, that's, that's the cheapest protection I can get. I can go further out in time and buy the 62 and a half call 
option on the other side, uh, but that's more expensive, right? It's obviously going to be more expensive than what I got here. Uh, so I prefer instead to protect that 62.5 with that long put. And you can see on the $2.5 wide spread, I'm getting a little bit more credit than what I need um, you know, for this June option. So we have the ability here uh, to kind of let this uh, see if it holds uh, at that level. See if it holds that 62.5 support and stops at these really extreme lows. Uh, and again, the, the amount of credit I need to justify the risk on a two and a half dollar wide spread is 58 cents. So you know, we can kind of let it see, okay, what's it gonna do? If you notice, if I analyze the trade, here, let me get rid of this one here. If I analyze this trade, I can wait uh, some time. Um, yeah, here you can see, uh, where's my slices? Let me get my slices in here. Um, you can see that, uh, where's my P&L? So to get to 58 cents, I will make $6. Uh, and for time to pass, for me to get to $6 of gain, you know, I've got time. I can wait till 517 with no change in price. I can wait till May the 17th. Uh, before the price of the, the spread will get down to 58 cents, theoretically, according to the Analyze tab. So that's one way to trade it. You can see the other way to trade it, it's a lot more speculative, but if you really think this thing's gonna bounce up, um, you can get a four to one profit to loss ratio up to 67 and a half uh, from the current, you know, 50, you can spend $50 with the potential of making $200 um, you know, if it were to get up into uh, that area, of course, uh, here, let's reset the parameters. Um, that would be, you know, even if it just made a one standard deviation move to the upside at current volatility levels, you're getting about $184, 141, excuse me, $141 um, gain uh, for the potential $50 loss. Of course, if you break below 62 and a half, then we know this thing's tanking, right? So if we got to say 61, then I'll have a $31 loss for the potential of a you know, $139, $140 gain. So you can see it's still a better than three, almost four to one profit to loss ratio, um, uh, in re whether it's at expiration or anywhere in between, even if we were to get out once it breaks. So it's a, it's a really speculative, but it's cheap. And so what you can do is you can say, okay, well for $50 in this example, if I'm using you know, a $1,000 risk is my normal risk uh, with my uh, portfolio account of $100,000. This one's got a couple hundred thousand, but if I were using 100,000 uh, at 1% of that, um, if that's my norm, then I would say, because I've got more profit potential, I'd be willing to lose uh, to, to risk only 250 bucks, knowing that if it worked out, I'll still make a thousand, right? The four to one profit to loss ratio. And if this were just a regular vertical like this one, um, just like normal, right? I would be risking, you know, a thousand bucks to try to make a thousand bucks because I would get out when my loss uh, was equal to my credit. So if I'm risking a thousand to make a thousand, uh, I can still try to make that same thousand by only risking 250 bucks here. It's a much lower probability. Uh, so my probability of success uh, is a lot lower here. It's only 25 well, 25% of chance of making any money, uh, a little bit higher than that, of making something more than zero or making or one penny. Uh, that's only the percentage of making one penny, right? For me to get up to that four to one risk reward, it's about a 16%. So, so very, very low odds. But you know, it's not too often either that this type of a stock in this sector moves down so far, so fast. Uh, in this case, down to a really major support level. So two different ways to trade that. One's a little bit more speculative. Uh, one's a, you know, a little higher probability. And this one, you remember, uh, we've got time uh, all the way through the 17th uh, here. We have time to wait. Um, let's see here. There we go. So um, here. We've got time to wait for that to get to a six dollar gain uh, for this credit here. You know, for that to drop down. There we go. Sorry, it was five seventeen. There we go. So yeah, we have time. We have what fifteen days uh, to wait and watch 
for that to hold and for it to bounce. And if it does bounce, uh, again, it, you know, let's say tomorrow in the next couple of days, let's get back to 5.2. Let's say by the end of the week, uh, which would be what? Uh, here, 5.5. Five. Okay, so by the end of the week, for it to get to a, let's get back to regular. For by the end of the week, for me to get that six dollar gain, where does the stock have to move up to, barring no change in volatility? It would have to move up to sixty three forty. So it would have to bounce up off of sixty three forty by Friday for us to say, okay, uh, now I'm only getting that fifty eight. Now my spread is going to be worth fifty eight cents, and that's what I want to sell it at to make it worth it. So, so I've got some time to see if this is going to hold. If this is going to hold. Of course, if we drop back down towards 62.50 instead of going up, if we were to drop back down instead to 62.50, you can see the credit for that is going to be now, you know, $15, so it's 15 cents higher will be 79 cents. Uh, so, you know, so again, I I've got that will buy me even more time if it were to come down. Uh, it will buy me more time to see if this is actually going to hold that support or not. So, so it's a higher probability strategy on one hand and more aggressive strategy on the other. All right, well, that wraps us up for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got some good value out of, the, out of uh, tonight's Market Outlook video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like tonight's video by clicking the thumbs up, and comment on anything that stands out to you uh, from tonight's video. Also remember to follow me on Twitter for more content and join our community um, by, uh, on the Facebook page as well as join our Market Scholars community by subscribing uh, to marketscholars.com. Again, thanks for your time tonight. We'll see you all next time.